At around 3 o'clock in the morning on June 5, 2013, the Chicago Police Department were dispatched to the 7200 block of South Green Street after receiving a tip that there was a man with a loaded firearm walking around the area. When the Chicago police arrived on the scene, they spotted Little Dirk attempting to hide a loaded 40 caliber handgun inside of his Hyundai Sonata and immediately arrested Dirk on the spot. Less than two years prior to this, Lil Dirk was arrested and charged with possession of a firearm with a defaced serial number. According to multiple reports, back in October of 2011, the Chicago police were doing the usual patrol through Lil Dirk's hood when they came across Dirk chasing another individual through the streets. When the cops began to intervene, Dirk darted into a nearby alleyway and tossed a loaded nickel semi-automatic handgun underneath a car. Lil Dirk then ran inside a home on the 6400 block of South Eggleston where police ultimately found Dirk sitting on a couch and arrested him. The charge he received for this incident was a class 3 felony that can carry a 2-5 to five year sentence in an Illinois state prison. Since this was Lil Dirk's first offense, Dirk was able to plead guilty to a reduced charge of aggravated, unauthorized use of a weapon and was sentenced to one year in jail. Dirk served 87 days of that sentence until he was released on parole on July 27, 2012 with his parole ending on July 27, 2013. That means that during his second arrest on June 5, 2013, Lil Dirk was already out on parole for a previous felony weapons charge. Things were not looking good for Dirk. After being booked into jail, a Cook County judge set Lil Dirk's bond to $100,000, which means that in order to be released, Dirk would need to come up with 10% of that money in cold hard cash. Despite being signed to Def Jam at the time, it seems that Lil Dirk didn't have access to $10,000 and allegedly reached out to Chief Keefe for some assistance, but Keefe didn't show much of an interest in wanting to help Lil Dirk out. While this was never confirmed by Dirk or Keefe themselves, it's pretty clear that there was something going on between the two. When Lil Dirk was initially arrested, members of Oblock, 300, 600, and more were tweeting out their condolences to Lil Dirk. Chief Keefe, on the other hand, didn't post anything on social media about Dirk other than this somewhat cryptic tweet on June 13, 2013 saying, OTG, hashtag, only the glow, which is a play on Lil Dirk's OTF, only the family. Dirk sat in the Cook County Jail for over a month before he could come up with the $10,000 bond money to be released, and according to rival rapper and gang member P. Rico, Lil Dirk got beat up in jail and even mentioned that the notorious shooter D. Rose wouldn't even leave his cell. Once home free, Dirk took to Twitter and tweeted the infamous lyrics to Chief Keefe's first day out, further hinting at the fact that Keefe didn't bother to help him get out of jail. Days later, Chief Keefe would once again tweet OTG. Lil Dirk would then proceed to go on somewhat of a rant on Twitter, starting out with shouting out Lil Reese and Fredo Santana for keeping it real with him. Then goes on to say that Chief Keefe would have been killed if it wasn't for his affiliation with 300. Dirk then states that he's better off beefing with the opposition and seems to banish Chief Keefe from the block by saying, where are you going to spend it at because you can't come around here with it. Ten minutes later, Lil Dirk continues his rant by saying, all the money but can't go get D-Rose? Laugh out loud. Bad enough he's on your ass already. He then tweets, if you're squad, why didn't you get T-Slick or D-Rose? You got a bigger deal, right? And then ends his rant with, warning, I'm not soldier boy, this shit can get ugly. Chief Keefe soon fires back by tweeting, just bought a 2013 four-wheeler for $10,000, which was the exact amount of money needed to bond out Lil Dirk. Keefe then goes on by saying he is Oblock and closes the conversation by saying he can't believe Lil Dirk was stunted for Twitter. Chief Keefe would then find himself in various legal situations throughout the rest of 2013 and even ended off the year by being sentenced to 90 days in a rehab facility in Malibu, California. Upon being released from rehab, Keefe returned home only to find Oblock requesting $7,500 in cash to bail out an incarcerated Oblock member by the name of Trey Five. Trey Five was arrested on November 11, 2011 for aggravated battery and discharge of a firearm. He was being held in the Cook County Jail on a $250,000 bond and had been sitting in there for over two years at the time. Oblock claimed to already have around $18,000 for the bond which is why they asked Chief Key for $7,500, giving them $25,000 in total to bail out Trey Five. Keefe made it seem like it was no big deal to give them the money, claiming he had just recently spent the same amount on shoes, but when asked to actually give them the money a week later, Chief Keefe said he threw it all in the club and ended up not giving them a dime. This soon resulted in a situation that would change Chicago drill music forever. On March 26, 2014, 
Chief Keefe was ordered to appear in a Chicago courtroom in regards to one of his many legal troubles at the time. While at court, members of O-Block such as Boss Top and OJ, along with some THF 4-6 members, allegedly broke into a home in Northfield that was being rented by Chief Keefe's former manager, Uncle Roe, and Keefe himself. The group was armed and allegedly went through the entire house stealing a wide variety of designer clothes, bags, and shoes. It was also reported that Boss Top even stole Chief Keefe's daughter's clothes and diapers, along with laundry detergent and deodorant. While this was taking place, one of the people inside the house, rumored to be Brandon Zerrer, aka Twin City CEO, based off these tweets, called 911 and reported that there was an armed robbery at the home. Then, moments later, Chief Keefe returned home from court where Boss Top would allegedly snatch Chief Keefe's iconic Johnny Dang piece off his neck, while Oblock OJ would reportedly snatch GBE Coppola's Jesus piece. This would escalate the situation to an entirely different level when a 33-year-old man and associate of Chief Keefe by the name of Terrence Smith was unfortunately shot during this altercation. After the shots were fired, the group allegedly stole Chief Keefe's silver 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee and fled the scene. Chief Keefe and the other Glow Gang members inside the house then rushed Terrence Smith to the hospital, where it was determined he would luckily survive his injuries. When questioned by authorities, nobody said a word, which resulted in no arrests being made, but officers in the Gang Enforcement Division released a document stating that the Black Disciples are having an internal conflict and listed three photos of the persons of interest in the situation, with one of the people being Tyree Davis, aka Boss Top. The official document stated, Officers assigned the Gang Enforcement Division have received information that an internal conflict has arisen among members of the Black Disciples. On March 26, 2014, there was an attempted murder and home invasion in Northfield, Illinois, in which Black Disciple Keith Cozart, aka Chief Keefe's associate Terrence Smith, was shot. This incident is believed to be related to the internal conflict. A silver 2010 Jeep Grand Cherokee belonging to Cozart was reportedly stolen during the above incident. A possible offending vehicle is a gold or silver minivan, unknown maker model, with Tennessee license plates. The following factions of Black Disciples may experience internal discord. Oblock, Lamron, and Brick City 600. Chief Keefe didn't say much publicly about the robbery until three months later when he released a series of tweets stating, I clothed you B, put money in your lint ball pockets. I tried to glow you up, see it worked, you don't look dirty no more. I'm nothing like these guys but we look alike, way higher form and fashion and I'm loyal. I was giving little dirty folks clothes, and money, I'm talking hundreds, 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 get them ones up out of here. Folks, they stole KK clothes out of her room, detergent, deodorant, and all on bloods. They stretched that all right. Montclair's, earrings, robins, trues, Gucci bags, Pelly's, Louis Vuitton coats. I can go on and on, but when I found out, I bought it again. And then ends the discussion with, I gave you the glow so you can eat, not try to compete. Little dirty GD folks. Chief Keefe would also later call out Boss Top by his real name by tweeting, Tyree Davis stole this too, with an Instagram link to a now deleted photo. Keefe would later do the same thing to his former go-to producer Young Chop by tweeting out, Old stuff Tyree Pittman stole while I was in court one day, with another Instagram leak to a now deleted photo. Shortly after this revealing Twitter rant, Lil Durk and THF Basie would post a video to social media taunting Chief Keefe and GBE Koppel by wearing Koppel's stolen chain, while posted up in front of a TV playing Chief Keefe's Close That Door music video. At the end of the video, you can even see Lil Durk pointing to Chief Keefe's chain on the TV and saying, we got that too. A few weeks later, Chief Keefe moved to Los Angeles, California and hasn't returned back to Chicago ever since he was betrayed by those he once called family.